G'day, welcome back. I'm here at Mount Seaview in New South Wales for the four-day BMW Masterclass. I did this originally in early 2020. I was very new to off-road riding at that time. And so this time I've come back because I really want to master sand and river crossings. So let's go and tick those boxes. Not signed on? No, I don't think so. Um, but just a bit of a welcome. Um, first up, there are some familiar faces, but some new faces as well. So uh, my name's Shane Booth. Uh, I'm here to, to run the course over the next four days. Day one, the Adventure Masterclass here at Seaview. We're going to start doing some more off-road. We're going to talk a lot about body position and standing on the bike and all the reasons for that. If you roll the bars forward a little bit more, and it's only to the 10 degree point, it just gives you that bit more room in the cockpit area. When position, if you don't have one of those or uh, some sort of device to bring your rear brake lever up a bit more, you'll find you're reaching for that rear brake in the standing position. Stopped in the perfect spot. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> it's really hard to try and reverse the jazz off the handlebars. The best way, left hand or whatever side you're on, one hand on the handlebar, turn your body, one hand on the rear of the bike. If you've got either punching, it's in gear, but and then you're almost walking towards to reverse the bike. That's that's your best bet. So you go to the ground, that's the key. And the way we extend our leg is just move your ass across the seat a little bit. So as you roll into a stop, we're not Lego men, our ass isn't clipped in onto a notch on the seat. <laughs> disappointed me with this whole subject, we have people that come to the course who buy a bike because of the seat height. And they really wanted this, but I sat on it and I couldn't touch the ground. And oh, gee, that's got all those electronics, but it's, it's too high for me, I can't touch the ground. If you make this, a natural reaction just like changing the gears pulling the clutch that you don't even think about it it just eliminates that It is doable and it all just comes back to leaning the bike into the hill. Just always having a positive lean up the hill whenever you're in this type of position on, on a bike. So if you had to, you've got your clutch in, you've got to be a bit of a contortionist, find your heel lever, banging into something, so you've got a gear, okay, and then if you had to ride off. can ride it away get in close pretty much right angles to the, the bars and when we do the lift I'm gonna step in with my right leg and try and get my thigh against the tank as a wedge okay. just so you can you get the lift done the wedge is in there whew, I got it up and then you can grab the handlebars so shuffle in and we're doing the lifting with our legs yep. you're not doing it with your arms Get the leg in, grab the handlebars, grab the brake, stand the bike up. If you're lifting from the other side, lean over and flick the stand out as a bit of a, a bit of a safety net.
movements we, we run through here, we'll start down at his feet. You want to sit, um, stand on the, the arch of your foot, basically. 90% of the time you're riding. Is the accurately when it's in closer. I don't want to be trying to slip the clutch all the way out there with my fingers extended. Does that make sense? It, to me, and that's just my thing, I get on people's bikes all the time and they have their clutch in a different position and I literally can't ride it. So. Brilliant, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, you nearly got him. I've hit one. Yeah, not fun. <laughs> I get all, I get all shuddery when I see kangaroos. Oh, it was uh, quite a treat. <laughs> Your mates here, you're getting your, your kit ready to 
getting the stand there and take five. While you prep all this, have it all ready to go. Grab your reamer, get it in the hole. We're trying not to lose air, yeah? So it's more time, more CO2s. Get a bit aggressive and give it a clean. Whip it out, grab the worm. You've got to get your shoulder behind it a little. You don't want to push it all the way into the tire. You can go right through them and it disappears. It's, 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 it's stopped leaking. But leave about 10 mil hanging out. That's about what you're looking for. Yep. And rip it out. Done. Um, you should only come across patches of it. I mean, unless you're going to hit it head into the Simpson or very rarely will you end up in sand for a whole day sort of thing. You know, it might feel like a whole day sometimes, but you know, it's, it's so the best thing to do with sand, unless you're really trying to source it and, and search for writing in sand, which like we just established, not many people are, um, then this is about just knowing how to deal with it, get out the other side of it and continue your day. Yeah, but the actual technique of it isn't that difficult. It's training yourself to be able to apply the correct technique against all your other embedded learning from riding a motorcycle on every other surface. That's the tricky part, the sand. And it's not about aggression. A lot of people think sand riding, you've got to be really aggressive. It's quite the opposite. You're actually like, think like riding on eggshells with your control inputs and things in sand. It's, it's quite the opposite to what a lot of people think where it's all about throttle and aggression and all this stuff. It, it, you, want it, you want it to be the other way. You know, quite often say, put a glass of water in your tank bag and that you shouldn't spill a drop when you're riding sand. That's, that's, that's what you're looking for from the way you control the bike, it really is. Day two as we pass through Port Macquarie on our way to do the sand. We'll give you the directions. Um, there's only really a couple of key turns we've got to make and we're, we're there, so it, it should be straightforward, but pretty confident we'll stay more or less in a, in a group. So we're going to go into and then we'll get turned around and come back out. Sometimes when it's patchy it can patch you out because yeah. you're firm and you build a bit of confidence and you don't realise and your speed creeps up a little bit so maybe you know. And number one is your speed. So when you're going to literally use your feet and want to have to touch your foot on the ground every now and then, you have to keep your speed very low. As soon as you start to use that technique but build up too much speed, every time a foot hits the ground, it flails. It hits the ground and gets split back, it throws you off balance, you get out of shape. So if you choose to sit down and walk the bike, which is absolutely fine, it's that's a technique on its own and it's literally walking pace. So that if you're he's going. We got no excuse.
more tracks, it's quite firm. Um, we quite often get guys try and get going from where I'm sitting here, and they can't without two or three people helping. It's that soft. So Maxi. Well done. <laughs> Deep sand on a big bike, even on this motocross bike or dirt bike it is, but so from that point there you're probably not gonna get it going sitting on it, you might, but for the sake of the exercise we'll say you can't. Um, <clears throat> if you feel it really going down, stop. You know, the deeper it goes, the harder it's gonna be to get it out. So you got a couple options. The first one you could try. would do next guys is you got to get it out of that hole so the easiest way is let the bike tip over and then drag it over like this so you're out of it like this you want to get clear enough of the hole so you don't ride back in it again. the hole but it probably will yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, we'll give it a, a shot. A a and yeah, like you said, if you've got mates, if you have any, I don't know. Because <laughs> the other option we had there, we could have got, you know, if you've got some mates with you, two people, one either side of the bike, lift the rear. As someone else is working the clutch and throttle, the person either side of the rear wheel, lift it over that hump and try and get the bike moving. Things can escalate pretty rapidly in this, this stuff on a, on a big bike, so. Comfort levels take a hit when you start getting to the edge of the road if that goes bush down there. I won't break too early on the bitumen because I don't want too much speed washed off before we hit that transition point, but it will you'll probably see literally a black line left on the bit. Oh,
ABS is still working there, so you're catching it on a Really give that front brake a workout. You're not even going any close to locking it up. <laughs> and this is the best way to build trust. This will just build trust in your front. Yeah, yeah. Not okay. just braking, just trust. In give front. it, a, give it a hard go. Yeah, but just and just make sure you're straight. Yeah. Your bike's not going to go like this. No, no. Yeah. Right. So give it a good. Currently, you're in enduro pro mode. Yep. Locking of the rear wheel is possible. Yep. And what we want is enduro mode. Okay, right. So, you, up till now, you've been able to lock the brake. Correct. Select that enduro mode. Yep. So, it's got ABS. Yep. And it's sorted. Yeah, no, no, the switching now. Good. Okay, so that's. I think that's really what I want to be. I think so. Yeah. The last time I was here, this was the river crossing, but now it's been filled in and turned into a bridge. So this is going to be interesting. The corner, between the corner and the bridge. Yep, exactly. Really? Yeah. Never seen it up there, but obviously when it floods, it goes. Well, it looks like it. It looks like the rivers yeah. changed course since then too. Because this has always been here. This we've used this for years. Oh, and okay. Years. Right. And then the other one we use is just straight ahead and across over there you can see those two wheel tracks up into that paddock yeah right this is going to be interesting this is where we cross why don't we go in this way <laughs> i wouldn't want to be coming out the side no, coming out inside, going to be awesome. that, that, that over there if anyone wants to do this Start, eh? <laughs> yep. Might cut my teeth on that. Yeah, likewise. No, no, this one's still a good one. So if you want to walk down here, guys. And you look at a crossing and it looks good. And you walk, you ride into it. And all of a sudden it's double the depth you thought it was. So if you ever... And this all comes back to good decisions. And also how remote you are. How much of a problem is it trying to be as sure as hell that you're not going to drop a bike as you can be? So that's how your technique might change for water crossings, depending on... and on your headlight too fast just keep it at a steady pace so you've got momentum but you're not get, if water's going over your head like that then you know that's that's out of control
<laughs> yep. Lifting uphill. Sorry, Craig. Ah. <laughs> Entry speed was a bit high. Yeah, thanks, mate. I was determined to give it a go. It's all right. You gotta learn. <laughs> you gotta learn.
man. Don't pull it away. And real finesse with the clutch to get the bike to come around. Did you say ABS is working with your ignition? Yep. Yep. <laughs> you want to try and get it as far around with the use of the clutch as you can. You can see Boothy there by not... He pulled the clutch in and almost got it to roll a little bit uphill because yeah. there's, then there's less to do yeah. with the handlebars, which can be, you'll find out, pretty physical doing this. So always with this lean angle. The extra lean angle even helps the front wheel slide down the hill. And, and, and then I'll push off and roll for the first couple of metres and then ease the clutch out. Don't try and ease the clutch out from a standstill because if you get it wrong and stall it, Good chance you fall that way. So, clutch in, start it, push off, roll, and then let the clutch out. So he's pushed up exactly the same way as he did without the Stalling's the hard part. I asked about day one or, <laughs> yep. with um, being um, challenged reaching the ground. Yep. When you stop, I guess you've got to be deliberate as to you got to yep. decide which way I want to bring it round because that's going to be the leg that's yeah. Whatever leg I land on determines use your the favorite, way I bring it around. Use your favourite leg if you can. Someone that's not, doesn't have to be a, a superstar rider, just someone that is a little bit more experienced and a little bit calmer, a little bit more brain space to work with, looks at the terrain, picks a good line and makes something that was looking real, real hard look like he's just ridden up a Tar Seal Road.
This was a good idea after a few beers. Subscribe now and let's ride.